Hi, so we are going to be starting Unit 9, which is Chemical Kinetics. Um, and you can see by the organizer here, this is page 903 in your binder. So go ahead and pull that out. When we finish this organizer, we will be finished with the unit. So we're going to talk about some stuff today. We'll move to some other stuff uh, in another video. So Unit 9 is all about something called Chemical Kinetics. So what is kinetics? Well, up to this point, what we've done is we've taken a look at reactants yielding products. Okay, so we know a lot about the properties of reactants. We know a lot about properties of products. We know how we can show the reaction in a balanced equation. What we don't know is what takes place during this arrow. And that's really what kinetics is all about. Kinetics is taking a look at what takes place during the arrow. So there's two major parts to kinetics. Um, we're going to start filling in the blanks up here across the top. Um, kinetics is the study of rates and mechanisms. So we're going to hit on both of those today, but we're going to do some general stuff, or not today, but in this unit. We're going to do some general stuff first. Okay, so we've got a couple of theories here. We've got a theory that I haven't named yet. We've got something called the transition state theory that's going to get us to some information. Okay, so that's what we're going to take a look at first. So kinetics can be explained by something called the collision theory. And there are three requirements to getting a reaction to take place appropriately. Um, particles have to, the most obvious one that people forget, Particles have to collide, and obviously with each other, and they have to collide in what we refer to as the proper orientation and with enough energy for the reaction to occur. So what I want to do is show you a video of the collision theory. Um, and that'll help explain things a little bit. Collision theory and reactions one. Collision this theory video, and reactions one. What is necessary for a In reaction this video, you are place. going to learn what is for necessary for a reaction to take place. For a reaction to take place, the reacting particles must collide. But just because they do collide, it doesn't mean they will react. Now consider, a reaction, they will react. Molecules, now consider a reaction between to two diatomic molecules, AA and this BB, to give two equation. molecules of AB. This can be represented by the equation. These two diatomic molecules can collide in many different orientations. These two I'll diatomic the molecules two can collide in many different orientations. But consider the two orientations here. In orientation one, the two diatomic molecules A2 and B2 in orientation are in the one, orientation the two diatomic react. molecules A2 and B2 two, are in the correct not, orientation so to react. No reaction occurs. In orientation Imagine two, they are not, and so no reaction occurs. Imagine our reaction being that of a ball of yellow plasticine, reacting with a ball of red plasticine, to give just if one ball consisting ball of the yellow, yellow and red plasticine stuck together. Plasticine, if you collide. slowly roll the ball of yellow plasticine However, towards the ball, the ball of red plasticine, plasticine, they will the collide. Will not be However, if no you pick reaction. up the ball of yellow plasticine, the ball, the ball of red plasticine, plasticine will not be stuck to plasticine. it. No reaction. Yet they will collide. If you throw well, the ball time, of yellow plasticine at the ball of, of red plasticine, the again they plasticine will collide. Will but this time, there if you pick up the ball reaction. of yellow plasticine, the we ball of red plasticine will be stuck to it. There has been a reaction. So, for the collision we to be call fruitful, a collision that results in a reaction a fruitful collision. Energy. So, for the collision to be fruitful, the reacting particles must so collide with sufficient energy. Particles must collide with sufficient energy. So to recap, for a reaction to occur, particles must collide with sufficient energy, and particles must be in the correct orientation. Okay. 
Okay, so that gives you a kind of a nice visual of the collision theory. Molecules have to collide. The right atoms need to collide with each other. If you want two certain atoms to react with each other, those are the two atoms that have to collide. And they have to collide with enough energy in order to have a successful interaction. So think about what has to happen. The atoms need to overcome the repulsion of the electron cloud. They have to collide enough so that the two electron clouds can overlap and they, the electrons can interact and so forth. So there's a certain amount of energy that has to happen in order to get that to hap in order to get that to work. Um, and that's where the next idea comes in, the transition state theory. So that, that collision that happens initially creates what's called an activated complex. Act, oops, activated complex. Sorry, spelled that wrong. Activated complex. Um, and the activated complex is going to exist for a very brief period of time when you've supplied enough energy, and that energy is actually called the activation energy. So the activation energy is the energy that you need in order to get those molecules to collide. So I've got one other video that I want you guys to take a look at that focuses more on the collision theory. I'm sorry, more on the, the transition state theory as opposed to the collision theory. So take a look at this one. To think about collision theory, let's consider the following reaction. Here we have atom A reacting with a diatomic molecule BC to form a new diatomic molecule A, B, and C. According to collision theory, molecules must collide to react. So for this example, atom A has to collide with molecule BC in order for the reaction to occur. Next, the collisions must have the correct orientation in space to be an effective collision. For example, let's say for this reaction, right, we have uh, our molecule BC, our molecule BC approaches A in this orientation. And since we're forming a bond between A and B, let's say this is the proper orientation, right? So this is the way our collision has to occur in order for the reaction to occur. If the diatomic molecule BC approaches in the opposite direction, so let's say we have our atom A here, and then we have, and then we have C, and we have CB, right? So the atom C approaches the atom A here. This is not the proper orientation for the reaction to occur. So this would be no. So there has to be a collision, but the collision has to be in the proper orientation. And finally, collisions must have enough energy. So if the collision doesn't have enough energy, the molecules, or in this case, the atom and the molecule, will just bounce off of each other. If you do have enough energy, the colliding molecules will vibrate strongly enough to break bonds. So let's go ahead and, and draw this in. We're starting with a certain energy for our reactants. So right here, we're gonna draw in the energy for our reactants, All right? So we have our atom A and we have our molecule BC at this point. And let's say our total energy is 20 kilojoules per mole. All right, when the atom and the molecule collide, right, they need enough energy. They need enough energy to break this bond between B and C, right? So we're trying to break this bond in here. And so we can find that energy on our diagram here. So we're starting with 20 kilojoules per mole, and we need to get up to here to 60. Right, so this is how much energy is how much energy we need for the reaction to occur. And we call this the activation energy, which is symbolized by E sub A here. So this is the this is the activation, the activation energy. And the activation energy is important because this is the minimum amount of energy that's required to initiate a chemical reaction. And for this reaction, we can see we need to get to 60 kilojoules per mole, right? So this point right here, this point right here is at 60 kilojoules per mole. We're starting out with 20, right? So 60 minus 20 would, of course, be 40. So the activation energy for this reaction, so Ea, according to our diagram, is positive 40 kilojoules per mole. 
So the energy of the collision must be greater than or equal to the activation energy. And at the top, at the top right here, we're gonna get a transitional structure. So let me go ahead and draw in a possible transitional structure for this reaction. So we have a bond forming between A and B. At the same time, we have a bond breaking between B and C. And we call this transitional structure right here, we call this the, the uh, transition state, right? So our structure right here is called the transition state. Right? You might also see this called the activated complex, right? So the transition state or the activated complex, right? And you can see I've drawn in partial bonds here, right? So the bond between B and C is breaking. At the same time, we have the bond forming between A and B. And so let's think about an, an analogy here, right? Let's say we have, um, let's say we have a hill. So here's my hill right here. And if we have uh, a ball, right, let's say we have a ball right here at this end of the hill. Well, it takes energy to push the ball up the hill. And let's say we have enough energy to get the ball to right here, right? Well, in that case, that's not enough for the ball to roll down the other side of the hill. Here, the ball is going to roll back to the starting position, right? So that's, that's like thinking about having not enough energy and the molecules just bouncing off of each other, right? But if you have enough energy, Right? So if you're starting out with the ball right here and you have enough energy to bring the ball to the top of the hill, so just barely to the top here, right? the ball can now roll down. And so the ball is going to end up at the bottom of the hill right here. Right? And that's, that's thinking about formation of your products. So for our example, right, our products would be our new diatomic molecule AB. So let me draw that in here. So here we have AB. And we also have we also have plus C at this point. So this would be this would be our products, and this represents the energy. Of okay, our so products. we are going to pause there. Let's he's going to go into a lot more details about uh, the diagrams here, that he's so drawing, but I that? don't want us to hear that quite yet. So we are going to go back to our organizer and continue to take a few take a look at a few things there. Um, so you saw that the activated complex is really something that had noticed that it had a whole lot of energy. That's because of, remember the, the diagram that he drew, it was A kind of bonded to B, kind of bonded to C. So you have a structure that's really not supposed